The year was 2015. I received the comment on one of my videos asking me to make a Blender tutorial. This was the first and last time I ever got a video request, so I immediately got to work. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. And that is why after half a decade of absence, I have returned to bestow upon my viewers the power of Blender. Alright guys, welcome back to another one of my Blender tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to morph one image into another using Blender. Now, there already exist some tutorials for how to do this, but the tutorial that exists currently is very outdated for two reasons. First of all, it uses the Blender 2.7 interface, which shouldn't be too much of a problem for people who have used Blender for a long time, but it could be quite confusing to new users. Uh, second of all, it relies off of the Blender internal render engine, which no longer exists. And uh, the third reason is that it doesn't take advantage of some new features in Blender that might make this workflow a little bit better. So let's just get right into it. Uh, first, delete the default objects here. You don't need the cube or the light for anything. Uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to get the camera. You're going to reset its transforms by doing Alt, R, and G. Uh, then in order for us to get a layered type effect, what we're going to do is we're going to move it on the z-axis upward. It doesn't matter how high you move it, just move it about like that much, I guess. Uh, now we're going to set up a few things to make it so that our rendering works correctly. First, go to Render Properties and Color Management. Under Color Management, you're going to change your view transform from Filmic to Standard. Uh, filmic view transform uh, mimics like the high dynamic range type effects that you would find in film but we don't need that we just want our colors to be the same as what they are in the images that we're going to import so we're just going to switch back to standard uh, now we're going to go under camera properties which you can only access if you have your camera selected and we're going to change our projection type from perspective to orthographic uh, and this is just so that the images don't have any perspective effects applied to them, they're just flat. And we're going to change orthographic scale to something like 2, it doesn't really matter exactly, 2 should be close enough. Now we're going to import the images. Go to Add, Image, and Images as Planes, which will only show up if you have the Images as Planes add-on enabled. Now we're going to select the images we want. I think I'll select these fine looking fellows over here. And we're going to change our material settings from uh, the default one selected as principled, which that's kind of like just a default type of plastic-ish material that can be transformed into really anything that you want to use. But we don't want that in our case. We want emission so that the light emitted is the same color as the light represented within these pictures, and we're going to import them. Uh, now we're going to switch from uh, flat shading to material shading so that we can actually see the images in here. Uh, now I'm just going to move this one, and you'll notice that they're overlapping, but if we look at it from other angles, we have this kind of weird shimmering problem with it, which could potentially give us some issues while rendering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one of the images uh, to a higher elevation to kind of act as layers, almost as if we're in a 2D image editor like GIMP or Photoshop. Alright, and this is why I had the orthographic projection mode enabled, because now you can see that the images don't grow or shrink as you move them closer or farther away from the camera, which is what we want. Alright, now time to get morphin. So first thing we're going to want to do with this image, the top one, whatever it may be, uh, we're going to go to the materials tab and you can see there's already a material established for it. But I'm going to go into the shader editor and, uh, what is it? You'll see here it has a setup where the alpha or transparency of an image uh, is linked to this system here, which affects the, uh, I guess, transparency of the image in the render. Now these images don't have any transparency really, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to disconnect the alpha shader from here, and uh, then you can use this to control the transparency, such as in this preview window here, you can see I can change the transparency of the material to anything I want. Uh, one is full opacity, zero is full transparency. 
Now, if you actually do have an image that has an alpha channel already, such as like a PNG image, all you're gonna wanna do to set up a little bit differently. What you're gonna do is you're gonna keep this connected, but you're gonna copy the mix shader and also transparent as well. And you're going to put them here. You're going to hook up uh, the mix shader here into this mix shader's input and then connect that to your surface output. And uh, then you can use this to control your transparency. But we don't need to do that right now. So now we're gonna go into our camera view and we're gonna uh, try and line these images up a bit. I like to line up the top of the heads because I think that's the easiest to transform. And also, top of heads tend to not vary a whole lot in shape. Uh, that should be good for this aspect. Now you're gonna wanna keep this material open so that we can adjust this slider as we need it while we're doing the next step. So I'm just gonna set it to 0.5 at first. Now what we want to do is we want to make it so the images can actually distort and change their shape so that they can morph into one another. Now for that, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the top image is selected and go into the vertex properties tab and we're going to add something called shape keys. Shape keys are basically frame keyframes for the shape of the object. I think they're very useful for if you have a character and uh, say you want the shape of their mouth to change when they're opening their mouth as that tends to be what happens in real life. You can have like a shape key that adjusts I guess the amount of mouth open shape versus mouth closed shape. But in here we're just gonna use it to change the shapes of these images to morph into one another. So we want to add a base shape key, which it does automatically when we click add new shape key. And then we're going to also add another shape key, which will be uh, for the final transformed image. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna go into edit mode and we're going to edit the base one and we're gonna subdivide it up a bit. I think this should be a good number of subdivisions. You can do more or less if you want. I don't know, it's really up to taste. Now we're going to go to the, click on shape key one, and we're gonna start editing this. This is what our final, I guess, transform is going to look like. Now let's go back into the materials tab for this so we can change the opacity. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to enable proportional editing here so that we can edit multiple vertexes at once. Uh, I'm going to change the size of it by scrolling around a little bit. And I'm just going to try lining up the chin first. Uh, and now here's a bit of a hard part is lining up the mouths and eyes because they're a bit hard to see which one's on which layer. So you're kind of just going to have to memorize what they look like in both instances. Now when you think you're done, uh, what we're going to do is now we're going to start keyframing things up. Uh, I'm going to have the animation be a uh, full 60, set, uh, 60 frames, I mean. We're going to exit edit mode, and you'll see that the changes go away, but don't worry, they're not gone. Uh, for the first frame, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this value here shows how much of our distortion we've applied. And you can see it actually changes the face shape quite a bit. And for the first frame, we want it to be zero. So we're going to hover over it and press I to keyframe it. And for the last frame, we want it to be 60. I mean, we want it to be a value of one. So we're going to change it to one and then press I to keyframe. And now you can see it changes, which is what we want. But we also want the colors to change as well. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to frame one, we're going to go to the materials, I'm going to, yeah, we're going to keep the transparency at one, and hover over it, press I to keyframe. You can keyframe just about all values in Blender, except for a few things, I guess. Now on the last frame, we want it to be zero. So we're going to change it to zero, and then we're going to hover over and keyframe again. Now watch. 
Whoa, that is spooky right there. But as you can see in our camera view, uh, this shot isn't really well positioned. It, it would look kind of weird if there's just like other people in the frame and stuff. So I'll show you a little trick we can do now that we have a newer version of Blender. So we're gonna take both these shapes, uh, move them downward a bit, and we're going to add a new plane, move it up, and for, for this plane, we're going to go into edit mode. It uh, doesn't really matter what perspective we're in. Uh, we're going to press I, and we're going to make a little square like this. Now, the square is going to act as a cutout for uh, what we can see in the frame and what can't be seen in the frame. Sorry for the dogs again. All right, so we're going to select the inner part, and we're going to give it a transparent material. Uh, now, in the EV render, we have to go down to settings and go to blend mode and change it to alpha blend in order for it to be transparent. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to face select and we're going to select these outer faces here. We're going to add a new material and that material is going to be one called a holdout material, which makes it so something just doesn't show up on camera. And we're going to click assign to these faces here. And if we look, we can see uh, anything that's in the holdout material doesn't show up. So now all we got to do is we just got to move this little portal over to what we want to be seen in frame. Uh, we can change its size and shape and stuff. Uh, and we can also move the camera to match with it. And we can adjust the orthographic scale to zoom in a bit. Just play around with this till you're satisfied. If you really want, you can make it like all mathematically correct and stuff. But I'm just going to make it look good enough. Now what we can do is we can play it and... Wow, that looks good. Alright, now all we have to do is just render it and that's fairly simple to do. Uh, just select uh, output location and here uh, for file format, I like to go to FFmpeg video, then under encoding, uh, I go to H.264. Uh, quality lossless coding speed real time so that I can get a fast export and uh, this I do so I can later re-encode it the way that I want it to be encoded but if you don't know how to do that uh, then I'd recommend changing encoding time uh, to slowest and output quality to maybe medium quality or high quality and then use that. Alright now I'll show you the final product and that will be all for today.